Woohoo. Are you ready? I am. Hello, Tracy. Hi, Mark. Now, for those of you who weren't in on the pre conversation, I just went through new Facebook hell because <laughs> I updated my uh, operating system to Big Sur on Mac. Oh, no. And it has been an unmitigated disaster as I try to find files and old stuff that's all been thrown to the four corners of the earth, including Facebook suddenly deciding that it didn't want to link up with Zoom anymore, which is what we're using for this cool meeting. So we, were, we apologize for being a few minutes late, but I think it's going to be worth it because we are doing a new project with Tracy. Woohoo! Yeah. I did. Yeah. All right. Now, this is also the debut. Those of you who follow Brand DIY Group know that I have been very, very bad. I have not been posting my daily posts. Uh, and that is because I am busier than a one armed paper hanger uh, working on projects. And I want to debut. Can, can I just? Do a little glory talk here just of a little course. plug for the, our, our kind sponsor here um i want to debut my e-glass e-g-l-a-s-s -S dot i-o i know right oh wait a minute that's too high <laughs> it's amazing uh, it's going off it's going off the top of the screen here it's e G L A S S dot I O. And this is a very groovy system. It is a piece of clear glass and it's lit. I'm lit. Watch this. Oh, I like this oh, also. <laughs> I know. And then, oh, oh, where'd the type go? Oh, there it is. And I'm in a fully lit room right now, but it looks very sexy, like I'm having dinner at High's restaurant. Um, and this thing is awesome. And we are selling it all across the United States to schools, which of course is very cool because it can connect on Zoom. So we call them Zoomers and Roomers, kids who are on Zoom, kids who are in the classroom. If I'm the teacher, I can see my classroom right now. I can see everybody in the classroom. And if I'm on, if the kids are on Zoom, I can see all the kids on Zoom. My God, Tracy. Amazing. And it's I get to be your guinea pig. Exactly. And now that was the word from our sponsor. Let's get on with the show. Tracy, talk to me about the project. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'll start off just saying that probably about, I want to say it was 14 years ago, um, I had a cancer diagnosis and mm -hmm. uh, it was fairly, I was fairly young and a, a young mom, et cetera. And so I did about a year and so of uh, treatment and I've mm -hmm. been in remission for about 13 years or just shy thereof. And uh, I found out not so long ago that I have cancer again and it's uh, been a big roller coaster to say the mm -hmm. least. Um, and as I'm sure anybody with a cancer diagnosis has is lots of questions about what will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and you know what that what it will look like while you're going through treatment and so on. So I, a, a glass or a wine or two might have been involved and I had a, a brainchild around what could we do for um, people going through cancer treatment and cancer recovery specifically for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. um, who may be in uh, need financial support through that time. And so mm -hmm. a lot of that is because if you're just a regular old person and you're working every day or depending on what your life is like, uh, you probably make too much money to qualify for any financial support and probably not enough or not enough money to actually support yourself if you need to take time off. So I was trying to come up with an idea that I thought would be um, accessible to everybody. So, you know, young, old people that are in a cancer journey and not, and it would be a fundraising component for mm -hmm. people to buy merch that's branded mm -hmm. and, uh, or also make a financial donation if they'd like to do that, if they're not interested in merch and that the proceeds and the net proceeds of all of that would go to people going through uh, cancer treatment and recovery. Okay. So brand DIY group connection for those of you who haven't been members for very long last year around this time, we took on a project. It was for a lady whose family had moved from South Africa. They'd fallen on hard times. She started a soap company called Beba, B-E-B-A. And yeah. we brought together a team, web designers, designers, um, uh, content creators. That's where Catherine Hamilton came into the picture who referred you to this as the new, mm -hmm. as the new project. 
And we help put together a whole bunch of cool stuff for Biba and lifted the brand and got them selling and they're doing great guns right now. So I hope that we can do the same thing here. And what we want to do over the course of the next four days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, is map out some fundamentals of the brand. So even if you don't get involved, you'll get some clue as to basic fundamental stuff that we do when we start working on a brand so we can see what we actually need to work on. And while we're working on these fundamentals, we will have little thought bubbles and go, we need somebody for this. We need mm-hmm. somebody for that. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do, right? Absolutely. Now, I mean, before we even start, though, you already mentioned something. You talked about merchandise. Yes. Merchandise needs to be designed. Merchandise needs to be really groovy. Mm-hmm. So I want it to be really accessible. So one of the things about merch is like so often it, it's just kind of like a cotton t-shirt, not much thought put into it. Mm-hmm. The logo or whatever is just sort of slapped onto it again. Like, and like no criticism, but I want this to be like where people see it and it becomes a talking piece. Like it's a little bit of a, you know, I, I don't want it to be quite the F-U-C-K cancer <laughs> approach, mm-hmm. although also amazing. I think I wanted it to be maybe a little more, um, a little, have a little more brevity. So mm-hmm. a little humor to it, maybe a little, a little softer approach, but um, mm-hmm. so wanting to do merch hats and shirts and sweatshirts and so on, and then have them drop shipped from a local company. Awesome. So mm-hmm. brand DIYers, who out there has access, uh, accessibility to merchandise? new and interesting merchandise, who is in that field? Also designers, I want some designers putting their hands up. Who wants to design a line of merchandise for something that will no doubt be very creative, very racy, maybe racy, <laughs> at least cheeky, <laughs> cheeky monkey. Let's call it, it's gonna be very cheeky monkey. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna tell anybody the name yet Okay. because good. I don't want that to be the final name. I'm, I'm not entirely convinced <laughs> about the name, but we'll get to the name stay tuned okay uh but we're gonna be we're gonna we need folks who are good at naming we need people who are good at merchandise we need people who are good designers who want to do some really stellar work and that's the first folks that we need on this project all right let's get to this first thing that we're going to do today is customer journey right yeah absolutely customer journey now where if you're doing a not-for-profit, a customer journey generally takes you along from the point where a customer first discovers you from being completely unaware of you to takes a closer look at you to comparing you to other companies or products to making the decision to buy to coming back and being a loyal customer and referring you to other people, right? Yeah, yeah now, absolutely. With charity and not-for-profit, it's a little bit different. Let's let's go yeah. through the stages. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think we talked about this a little bit before, but there's got to be a trigger, something that sort of because we need a catalyst to get us into the, the the brain space of people because they won't have heard of us before, even if it's fun. Um, mm-hmm. it, it needs it needs to have meaning. So, there's got to be a trigger that gets people to oh, what's that? I want to know more about it. Mm-hmm. And then we move them into a place of consideration, right? Mm-hmm. And so that the 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 stage of consideration really is like is kind of like is it relatable is it or is it something that's an emotional hook for them is it Mm -hmm. um you know what what's the grab for them is it just that it's viral or trendy or cool Mm -hmm. or new what is that Mm -hmm. um and the consideration would be not only just the merch because that sometimes is the selling point but it has to be also like what does it mean for them what's in it for me right makes sense All yeah. right, where do we go from there? Um, then we're going to look at like the ag- active evaluation process. And so that's where we have to bring people into the credibility and legitimacy of supporting uh, whatever this fundraiser is going to be, whether it's from uh-huh. a cash perspective or a merch perspective. They're trying to figure out like, are you, like, are you legit? Like, is, mm-hmm. this a, is this something that I want to support or be associate myself with? And that quite often just comes from uh, the network of people that participate in the actual charity itself. Like, how do you legitimize it? Is it through sponsors, partners, networks? You know, people want to do a little bit of fact finding for themselves and to also make sure that, you know, if they're making, they're making a donation, that um, a, like the majority of that isn't going to overhead but it's going mm-hmm. directly to a cause that they can physically see in front of them. And in this case, it would be all net proceeds to a single person or multiple people. Right. 
Yeah. Okay. Active evaluation. Then where do we go? Um, that's the time of purchase. Mm -hmm. So at the moment of purchase, we have to make that a smooth, seamless uh, process, right? So basically what we're trying to do is give them the best customer experience possible, least mm -hmm. amount of friction. Um, so quick and easy, simple to the point so that it doesn't create a barrier to entry. So mm -hmm. that, that point of purchase is really crucial as well. Real smooth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... The best part is where mm -hmm. we come up with our champions and our, and our ambassadors. This is where people start to evangelize the brand and, and become your sort of your talking piece for it. And it brings you right back to the beginning again. So that becomes the trigger for other people becoming customers or donors and or becoming a repeat donor. So it's, gotcha. like, it's almost like a full circle. And nowadays that becomes really important because accountability for donors money is really mm -hmm. crucial as well. Like how do we communicate that back to people? Mm -hmm. So not so many touch points that people are uncomfortable. Like I don't want to get an email from you once a week, but I'd, mm -hmm. I'd like to get a sincere, genuine thank you. I'd like mm -hmm. to have some communication around that. And then maybe I'm going to tell you, hey, I'm going to reach out to you quarterly and let you know how we're doing. Or we're going to tell you about how many people we supported over the course of the year, or, you know, a couple of times mm -hmm. a year so that people know they can anticipate that you're going to send them messages. Yeah. Um, and then we, we get the whole process going again. Or, you know, maybe we launch a new line of merch or something like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Now, to me, the importance of doing something like this tomorrow, we're going to do a funnel and yeah. uh, uh, a wheel, um, a convert, like a, a wheel of, of, of how you take a current customer and you keep them coming back for more with a steady flow of yeah. sales and service and, uh, and product. Um, and so we're gonna talk about that tomorrow, but even right here, the reason I do this all the time, brand DIYers, the reason we do this all the time is if we go from trigger consideration, active evaluation, purchase, loyalty uh, in an endless loop, what it should do is it should start to inform us of things, skills, actions that we need. So let's go back to the trigger. I don't know you from Adam. How am I going to get on your rate? How are you going to get on my radar? Well, and I think with something like this, it becomes, it, it's either viral word of mouth or it's mm -hmm. viral online. So that becomes through social sharing um, and content, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, promotion or boosting in that way. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of these types of movements um, that are grassroots really come from a place of people talking about it. And so that can be as much as people telling their friends and family, and maybe they see something online, but word of mouth becomes super crucial in grassroots movements. And people, I think, are looking towards smaller organizations to help support mm -hmm. them as well, um, mm -hmm. just from a place of not necessarily they don't want to support corporate, but, you know, we're going back to local community level as opposed to big box kind of ideas where we want to be able to see people in our community that are getting the support from the work that we do. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just distracted here because I'm about to... I can't. Oh, you're help using it. a new color. I can't <laughs> help it, Tracy. I'm just getting excited. All right. All right. All right. So social. Word uh -huh. of mouth. Uh -huh. yeah, Whoa! I know. I know. I know. I got all these colors. I got. I got. I got to go through all these colors. Excellent. All right. Social word of mouth. Uh, th so what we need, we need some people who are skilled at getting the word out. Oh, by the way, uh, on eGlass too, uh, there are opportunities for people who do so, not on eGlass, but on related companies. There are opportunities who are ninja for people who are ninjas in social. I am always looking for social media ninjas for all my clients. So if you, Mr. and Mrs. Brand DIYer, are a social media ninja, we want you on Tracy's project. And I also want to talk to you about other projects. Word of mouth. It becomes the, the most uh, trustworthy piece of information. Is that PR? Is that is that uh, figuring out how to uh, how to or how to how to uh, like? Do we get sort of influencers? Do we need folks who who are going to be able to reach out to legitimate people in the community and say, "Hey, I want you to talk about this." Yeah, I mean, I think on a on a formal level. 
that that type of PR works, but mm -hmm. I think it also comes down to like who we get involved in a project. Um, and that kind of PR can ju be just as credible, if not more, carry more weight, right? So mm -hmm. do you look for a, a influencer or a supporter or a sponsor or a partner, a partner network or something of that nature, somebody that wants to get on board? And maybe that's even the merchandise folks, right? Like okay. maybe this becomes part of their uh, charitable contribution. And, you know, maybe they do a portion of the proceeds that they donate back or something like that. And it just, that type of thing, um, that type of PR is extremely credible as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the best the best PR, we're seeing that with eGlass right now, is actual teachers who are using this in their classroom. Yeah. And, the, and the students are freaking out. And we're doing videos of the teachers talking about that. You can't You can't buy that stuff. Exactly, because people are speaking from the heart. It becomes yeah. their own story, right? Just like yeah. as we talk, as we get to the end of this um, sort of the cycle, mm -hmm. is that when when it becomes people's own story, right? So mm -hmm. they want to talk about the word of mouth of this charity, but maybe it's because they know somebody else who's going through breast cancer, or they know someone else who's you know lived twenty years after uh, breast cancer, and and they're still in recovery or or something of that nature. So it becomes their own story to tell. So that kind of word of mouth becomes really supportive as well. Okay, so we need people. People who are connected to with breast cancer associations, cancer associations, people who are who are uh, who know how to get a good story out. We yeah, need all media. that stuff. I think media is another yeah. great place to be okay. word of mouth. Yeah. All right. So that's the cattle call, folks. If you if you have that skill set, we want you on this project. Let's talk about consideration. Again, I think this is a nice segue from what we were just talking about around their relatability. And mm -hmm. part of the consideration process is like, why would I want to support this? Like, I, I'm going to consider it. I mean, think about how many people you know that don't know anybody who has a breast cancer story. It's very few. It's mm -hmm. like one degree of separation in so yeah, many yeah. ways. So I think the consideration is sort of like, what's in it for me? Like, is this relatable to me? Or, or maybe the consideration is this is just a new cool trendy viral thing and you see how quickly that happens now mm -hmm. um, and that can be as simple as something's just really cool and they want to be associated with it mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it becomes from a place of passion or personal experience something of that nature so the consideration process is why would I do this over something else or why would I choose this um, and again that's looking possibly as we sort of lead into the the credibility piece of it as well so we need good content creators yeah absolutely that can tell a story and yeah and short, simple, sweet, you know, like we want bite-sized pieces of things um, and, and to make it really relatable. So social media ninjas, again, to get the word out and content creators who you can take like five or 10 or whatever points that you say, this is why we are legit, we're legit, we're legit. And, yeah. and that, that we get the word out. So people start to shift from, oh, that's neat to, huh, mm -hmm. that makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, All right. Absolutely. Then we go to active evaluation. So it's just sort of the decision making place, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. What's going to take me from a, I'm considering it and I'm thinking about it to I really want to do it and now I'm going to move forward. So that it, active evaluation again is discovering its credibility, legitimacy. You know, they're probably going to ask people, have you heard of this? They're probably mm -hmm. going to check it out online to see what they can find out about it to make sure mm -hmm. that it, it seems credible to them. Um, and and so we just, need we need to create a world here. I mean, it's going to be an e-commerce website. Ultimately, it's going to be something like Shopify. But we need to be able to create a world where people can click on multiple points and go, oh, that checks out, that checks out, that checks yeah. out. So we need people who can draw like a web of of connections and and relations mm -hmm. and figure out how. So we're strategists we're talking about here, right? Yeah, strategists and people who are really good at retail. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think keeping it really simple, this is part of it, we don't want it to be complicated for people. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to get there and navigate quickly to the who, why, what, where. Mm -hmm. And then it's keeping it really simple so that it doesn't, it's not complicated for people who want to make a decision. And then purchase, duh, we need people <laughs> who, know, who know how to how to make the purchase process absolutely but simple. And you know what, I bought some soap from, um, from Biba. Uh, and and you know she just killed it she just absolutely crushed it hats off to all the team who is working on the biba e-commerce website because it is so simple and then she has these conversion emails that follow up where she's like writing me these little personal notes and I'm like this is so uh -huh. nice That's yeah awesome. yeah it really works and so i mean the team that worked on the biba project just making the the process of purchase so simple 
you know, yeah. here, yeah. buy this Absolutely. stuff. And then here's my message to you. I hope you enjoyed. Here's how you use it. I loved it. Yeah. That's what we exactly. want to do here. Yeah. And, and building authenticity into that. Right. So it doesn't yeah. feel like a churn of a transaction. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to feel like Amazon. Yeah. You don't <laughs> right? want to feel like a douchebag. Right. Yeah. It doesn't want to <laughs> like one of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, click funnel thingies. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, gross. All right. And then loyalty. Uh, I want to, I want to have us bring somebody aboard who is really good at loyalty. That doesn't look like a coffee card. Yeah. You know, how do we create loyalty and retention on our customers so that they go all the way back to the beginning and repeat and tell all their friends that you're legitimate, that you're the, the bee's knees and uh, you should be part of this and yeah. you should buy this stuff. So we need some people who are skilled in that. So folks who are good at uh, creating something viral up front, something mm -hmm. cheeky monkey, uh, people who are very good at moving from uh, from awareness to persuasion in the consideration thing. That is folks who know how to get out social media, folks who know how to get out word of mouth. Uh, we need those experts in this team. Active evaluation, we need good content creators. We need people who can say, these are the five things they, they want to see. we got to create compelling stories around all five of these. Purchase, make it absolutely effortless. Loyalty, how do we do loyalty so it doesn't come across all douchey and mm -hmm. here's a coffee card, buy nine, get the 10th one free. Yeah, absolutely. Is that about sum it up? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, that's our first session. Tomorrow, what we're going to talk about is the conversion funnel. And what we're going to do, we're going to take these same things, trigger, consideration, active evaluation, purchase, and loyalty. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to talk about tactics that we might use in each of those stages. You know, Brilliant. So we talked Brilliant. a little bit about social and word of mouth, but what could an actual tactic be? Yeah. And you know, I want people to come to us and say, yeah, I got some tactics. You're a suck, Mark. I got better ones. <laughs> um, but I think that that would be a good start. And then people might yeah. be able to envision too, I could help. I could do that. Yeah. Um, and I have a, I have a couple of things that I have in my pocket that I think will be good for that conversation. Oh, really? I do. Oh boy. Okay. Well, stay tuned. I, I mean, I think that that's going to make it all very, very cool. And look at this, this, this thing is, I love this thing. This is it's the business. Amazing. I know. I know. And I love how fun. it re it completely flips it around. So yeah. that the people that are watching can still. Yeah. See it. I mean, if you can't, if you read this, you can see yeah. that it's backwards. So what it does, the camera, it actually flips the image. So I'm writing normally. Mm -hmm. And then if, but if you're reading it on the other side of the glass, it would all appear backwards. Exactly. So the camera actually flips the image. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever been happier, Tracy. Well, I like seeing you happy. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm so, I'm so happy. All okay. right. Let's make you happy. So uh, dial in tomorrow. Also, this broadcast is happening at 4 p.m. We used to do brand DIY at 10 a.m. And a lot of people, yeah. in fact, everybody said that is the stupidest time in the world because I'm stuck <laughs> oh, no. in the middle of the day. So yeah. I'm experimenting with times. So we're going to try next week at noon. Today's four o'clock. We're going to do four o'clock every day this week. See what it does for sure. readership, uh, viewership. Of course, they're all recorded sessions. So that uh, doesn't really matter because you can dial up anytime. But uh, yeah. yeah. All right, Tracy. Thank you so much, Mark. We will see you tomorrow and we will talk about the conversion funnel and the flywheel. Perfect. I love it. Thanks and so much. you know what? Bring your pens. Two new colors. <laughs> Two new colors <laughs> tomorrow. We will not we will not go back to blue know, and pink excellent. anymore. It's all new colors tomorrow. Okay. See you, Tracy. Right. See you later. Have a great Bye. day. Bye. Bye.